Welcome to this YSL tutorial. In this session, we're going to use SQL Server Reporting Services to teach you how to control the number of records you see on each page of a report. So what you'll learn in this session is how to use the page size to control the number of records per page. That method is a little bit inaccurate, so after that we'll show you how you can use an expression to group the records in a table to more accurately control the number of records per page. Finally, we'll talk about how you can use parameters to allow your users to control how many records they get on each page of a report. So let's get started. When you first create a report in Reporting Services, you don't really have any control over how many records you'll see on each page. To demonstrate this, I have a simple report here which shows me a list of fill names, their release dates, and in the first column, an expression which calculates the row number of each record. If I right click this text box and choose expression, you'll see that we're using the row number function to do this. So if I choose OK and preview my report, we'll get an idea of how many rows reporting services decides is the best number for each page. So I have 48 records on page 1 and the same number on page 2 and so on and so on and so on through to the final page in the report where any remaining records are shown. One way to modify the number of records on a page is to change the page size of the report. So if I wanted to do that, I can head back to the design view, head to the report menu and choose report properties. On the page setup tab of this dialog box, I have the opportunity to change the paper size. Now I can choose one of the preset standard paper sizes like A4, A5, etc. Or I can even choose a custom size and type in my own dimensions for width and height. I'm going to type in the height as 20 centimeters and click OK. When I preview the report again, I should see that reporting services has changed the number of records on each page. So now I'm down to 32 rather than previously 48. So that's one way to modify the number of records per page. But what if you wanted to control this in a bit more detail? The most accurate way to control the number of records on each page is to use a combination of an expression with a grouping level. So to add a grouping level to my table, I'm going to use the Groups panel down at the bottom of the screen. And in the Row Groups section, I can find the Details item. If I right click on this, I can choose to add a group and then parent group. Now the dialog box that appears, ordinarily what you would do is select one of the fields from the data set that your table is based on. But that's not what I want to do in this case. I want to calculate a value in this table that I'm then going to use to group the rows. So I'm going to do that by clicking the FX button to launch the expression builder. I'm going to use two functions to generate my expression and the first one I'm going to show you is one that you've already seen. It's the function called row number that we used earlier on to calculate the number of each row in the table. So row 1 will be row 1, row 2 will be the number 2 and so on. The next step is to divide that number by the number of records you'd like to see on each page. So I'd like to see 10 records per page. If you'd like to see 20, divide by 20, and so on. The last step is to wrap this expression up inside the ceiling function. If I could spell ceiling, that would help. Ceiling, open brackets, and finally, close round brackets. Now what the ceiling function does is gives you the lowest whole number, the smallest integer, that is greater than or equal to whatever number you pass inside. So if I can try to explain this in a bit more detail. Row number for the first row in my table, row number nothing gives me the value 1. Divide 1 by 10, that gives me the answer 0 0.1. The ceiling function then gives me the smallest whole number that is greater than or equal to 0 0.1. So that will generate the value 1. Row number 2, 2 divided by 10 is 0 0.2, the, highest whole, the, sm the smallest whole number greater than that is 1. Row number 3, 3 divided by 10 is 0 0.3, and so on and so on and so on. So that will generate the value 1 all the way up to row number 10. 10 divided by 10 is 1, unsurprisingly. 
and the ceiling function gives me the smallest whole number that is greater than or equal to that. So it calculates 1 as well. When we move on to row number 11, 11 divided by 10 is 1.1 and ceiling gives me the next whole number which is 2 and that will work all the way up to row number 20 and so on and so on and so on. So that's what that expression does. It calculates a single whole number that we can then use to group our records. So I'm going to choose OK at this point and choose OK again. And then a couple of irritating things happen. First of all, an extra column gets added to my table, which I'm going to remove shortly. I'll leave it in there for now. The other irritating thing that's happened is something that's not very obvious at this stage, but if I try to preview my report, I'm going to generate an error message. And I get an error message related to a sort expression for my table. If I head back to my design view, one sneaky thing that happens when you add groups in the groups pane is that reporting services try to add an automatic sort so the group 1 that I've generated down here, I need to modify. I'm going to right click on it and choose group properties. If I head to the sorting tab, I can find that I've added this inadvertent sort, this automatic sort. So I'm going to get rid of it by clicking somewhere on that item and then choosing to delete it. I can then choose OK. And when I preview the report now, I'll be able to see the result. It won't be quite exactly what I want to see just yet, but it proves that my expression is working. So here we go, you can see for the first 10 rows the group is the value 1, for the second 10 rows it's number 2 and so on and so on and so on. So there are two more things I think that I want to do at this point. First of all, back in the design view, I'm going to get rid of this column. I don't need to see this column in order to, uh, to create my groups. So I'm going to right click at the top and choose to delete columns. I'm going to delete the column only, not the column and the group, which is quite important. So you can see that the column has disappeared, but my grouping level still remains. The last step is I want to make sure that my page breaks appear between my groups. So to do that, I need to right click on the group again in the groups panel, choose group properties, head to the page breaks tab, and choose to add a page break between each instance of a group. If I choose OK, when I finally preview my report, I'll get the results that I wanted, each page containing just 10 records. So we've seen how you can accurately control how many records you get on each page of a report. But what if you wanted to go one step further and let your users control how many records they see per page? We can do this by using a parameter which lets a user type in a number and then that number will be used in our expression to control the number of records per page. So to start with, you'll need to add a parameter to your report. You can do this in the report data window in the parameters folder. Start by right clicking on the parameters folder and choose to add a parameter. On the general tab there's a few things we should change. First of all the name of the parameter. Let's uh, change the name from its standard name to something like uh, row numbers or row number. The prompt of the parameter will be what the user will see. So let's tell them to type in the number of rows per page. Nice and descriptive. The next option is quite important, uh, the, the data type of the, uh, the parameter. We want to make sure that the user is only allowed to type in a whole number, an integer. So that's what I'm going to select from the list. And in, in simple terms, that's all we need to do. I think it's also worthwhile adding a default value to this parameter so that before the user types something in, there is already a value there. So on the default values tab, I'm going to choose to specify a value. Then I'm going to click the add button. And then I'm going to replace the null with the number of records I would like to see on each page by default. So when the, when the user first browses to the report, they'll see 10 records per page. If I choose OK now, you can see what the parameter will look like by heading to the preview and you should see that your parameter appears at the top of the page in this little grey area. You can type in a different number if you like, I'll type in 5 instead of 10. And there's a button here that says view report. At this point clicking the button will do absolutely nothing because I haven't yet linked this parameter to the number of records per page. So that's the next step. 
to do that, head back to the design view. What I need to do is alter my expression to use the parameters value rather than the number that I typed in earlier. So I need to right click on my group, choose group properties and on the general tab I need to modify the expression that my table is being grouped on. So to do that head to the FX button. So here's our expression that we created earlier on. What I need to do is replace the number 10, this constant number 10 with the value of my parameter. So I've highlighted the number 10 here. In the bottom left hand corner of your expression builder you can find a category for parameters. So if I click on that I can then find my row number parameter. I can double click on this and it will replace the highlighted text in my expression with a text that refers to the value typed into my row number parameter. So if I choose OK and choose OK again I can preview my report one last time and to begin with I'll get 10 rows per page just as expected. If I change this number now however in the parameters box and click view report it will alter the number of records I get per page. I think it's quite neat. There's one small limitation to this and that is you can't exceed the number of records that the page size can naturally hold. So if you remember right back at the start I showed you that on an A4 page reporting services gives me 48 records with this particular font size. If I try to show 50 records per page and view my report I'll see that I'm still limited to 48. Slightly weirdly the remaining two records in this first group will appear by themselves on the next page before the third page shows me the start of the, the following group. So that's just one thing to be slightly careful of. As long as you don't hit the limit of the, the number of records per page, you can allow your users to control how many records they see. If you've enjoyed this training video, you can find many more online training resources at www.wiseowl.co.uk.